Hey ladies, good morning. What's going on? Welcome. So glad that you were here. This one today, today's power lesson is really for all my emotional eaters out there. Some of us, like we know what to do. We've had all of the, we've done all the classes and we've done all the workshops and we've read all the books and we've got all the degrees or whatever it is, the searching, the nutrition, education. We know how to move our bodies. We know what to do. And yet there is this emotional piece that is really quite holding us back a bit from really being able to stay consistent with our healthy eating and what it is that we actually know. There's like a disconnect between the mind and the body. And we know that we should have compassion for ourselves and that we should love ourselves and that it, it we, we shouldn't beat ourselves up. And yet it's like, well, then how do I motivate myself to actually do the things that I need to do? And it's really freaking frustrating. And a lot of times what happens is that when women actually clean up their food after there's like that, you know, initial first couple of weeks of like, oh my God, I feel in control again. I'm losing weight and the inflammation is going down and I feel so great. That steady progressive over time, not really having a way to deal with the emotions and the anger and the frustration, the disappointment, just of like regular life as it comes up without eating in a way that then sets us back up in that cycle to then be all focused on the weight and the food and not be dealing with the actual emotional part. So I'm going to tell a little story to kind of um, highlight what it is that I'm talking about here and how to really navigate this emotion, right? Like the anger that comes up when we're overweight and we feel out of control. And then also when we're losing weight and we actually feel in control. And yet there is this like underlying annoyance that like we can't eat the way that we want to. And that release that we get from just eating like what everyone else is eating, like the sugar and the flour and the alcohol and like all of that stuff. And where is that balance? It is it can be very challenging as you're making changes in the way that you think and the way that you behave and your actions and your habits and really rising to the occasion and rising to your responsibility, responding to your own abilities to actually take control, not control in like a control, hold on for the, you know, tight for the rest of your life, but having a sense of um, being at cause instead of just at effect, right? Where it's like, you're just letting life happen to you, like feeling like you can actually get up in the morning and set some intentions and follow through and, and begin to have the life that of your dreams or like your mind and your body, your internal and your external are in coherence. And when they get out of coherence, having it be freaking okay. And not just turning to the anger or turning to the food or getting focused back on the weight. And what does the scale say? And am I a good girl today? And have I been bad? And all of this judgment. So the story that I want to share with you is it was one of the scariest days of my life. I remember we were going somewhere and James, my son, he was probably like, I don't know, three or four at the time, five, somewhere around there. And he really wanted a Jamba Juice. And I had said no. And we had stopped at the house on our way to go to his um, a baseball practice. And I was going to grab him something to drink. So I ran inside, I just grabbed a drink, ran back outside, literally like the car is like 10 feet from the door and the car door is open and he's gone. And I was like, James, James. And like, as a parent, that thought of like, did somebody just come by and steal my child and like take off? Right. Like we live close to the freeway. You could go three different ways right there. Like I was tripping and I was like, started to like scream his name and I couldn't see him. And I was inside with a small one bedroom apartment. So there, he wasn't in there because I was just in there. So I'm like looking all over the place. I start freaking out. I saw a car, start calling my neighbors. I'm going to all the neighbors houses. We have like the baseball, the kids from the baseball all come out. People are driving around looking for him. I am like losing my mind. It's now five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And you just are, I'm freaking out. My heart is racing. My brain is racing. I just don't even know what to do. Okay. So long story short, like, you know, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes later, I am like, am, am I calling the police? He comes like, just walking like around the corner from the bush or whatever. He was like hiding. And I was so angry. Like, I love this kid so much. And anyone who is a parent knows exactly what I am talking about. That feeling, if you ever feel like you, like that a moment where your child is gone 
And I was so angry because I love him so much. And I was so afraid. And I was, I was afraid. I was terrified. I was embarrassed. I was, and it, it like, I wanted to rip his face off. Like I was so angry. I almost wanted to hurt him because I was so scared of losing him. And I remember I turned to my neighbor, Amy, I love you so much. If you are watching, thank you so much. You changed my life. This is one of those moments that was just so precious. And I was so angry. I wanted to scream at him and I wanted to punish him and I wanted to him and I wanted to tell him to never do that again. And she turned to me and I said, what do I do? And she just looked at me and she said, hug him. Just hug him and tell him how much that scared you and how much you love him. And I just grabbed him and I held him and I hugged him. And I said, honey, that scared me so much. I love you so much. I don't ever want anything to happen to you. And it was one of those moments where like in the moment, my natural reaction to myself and my life, my perception that, that need to like fix and to protect and to, I don't ever want to feel that way again. So I need to make sure that it never happens. And I'm going to hold on like this. I realize that that is a very similar feeling that I have when it comes to feeling out of control with my weight where I am scared and I don't want to feel that way. And it's so painful and I'm embarrassed. It was all of these very similar feelings. And, and my natural reaction is to get angry, is to get angry at myself, angry at society. I'm angry at the food. I'm angry at my mom for not teaching me how to freaking just love myself and eat properly when I was a kid. I'm just, I just get so upset and I get so angry, but obviously it's not appropriate to show that anger. And I was never, I didn't know that all I needed to do was to stop and to turn and to hug myself and to just pause and to just say, I care so much. I love you so much. And I'm afraid. I didn't know that that was a possible thing right? Like I'm so grateful that I got to, as a parent, give that gift to my son. I don't remember ever getting that gift. Maybe I did. I don't remember, but I can give that self that to myself now in this opportunity that I have of realizing where the anger actually comes from, right? Cause it's it, the anger is there's something underneath, but of course it's not appropriate to show anger. And so when I would get this way in my life and I, before I had these tools and this, these techniques and people to talk to in my coaching group and the consistency of this, these kinds of conversations and dusting the cobwebs off of my emotional self and building that strength in the groups that I, that I not only host, but I also participate in on a regular basis, then I, I'm able to understand what's actually underneath that anger. And instead of turning to the food to soothe that, turning to the alcohol to soothe that, turning to other people's validation to soothe that, although, you know, I mean, I'm still human. <laughs> right? So I will say that I do appreciate other people's validation and I do enjoy the hell out of the meals that I actually eat. That is really important and it is soothing on some level. And there are other ways and other opportunities to deal with this kind of stuff. So if you're an emotional eater and you have noticed that there is some anger in either direction that begins to come up, either when you're feeling out of control with the food and you get really angry at yourself and try and control it, or you feel like in the other direction where like the food is in place and like, that's great. But now you've got all of these emotions. Now everyone else is irritating you. Can't stand that person or that person or that person. You can't even stand yourself. It's like all of this anger is coming up like underneath and you're like, oh, I just wish that I could soothe and just like, you know, block out everyone, watch Netflix and like eat a bag of box and carton of whatever. <laughs> right? So that's that, that cycle of the emotional eating. So back to anger and weight loss. So if that is something that you are familiar with, and this is resonating with you and it's making sense, I would strongly suggest getting some support, getting some help around this. You're not alone and you're not crazy. And the way that we have learned to deal with our emotions 
is it's okay. And there are other ways, right? So like, if you're noticing that this is an issue and a problem, then you're ready to deal with it. You don't have to be afraid that like, oh, you know, what if something comes up and I'm not ready to deal with it or whatever, whatever that is. Like if you're noticing it, it's your time, right? This is your wake up call of like, okay, I, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for a little support, a little help, a little guidance, a little softening around the edges, a little loving and compassion for myself. Just hold myself, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sad that you were doing that. I love you so much. And you're worth every bit of compassion and care and love and attention. Oh, Lord. You know, it's wild being a person. It's really, really, really cool. So I hope that you have a beautiful, wonderful day. As a reminder, I have started a morning accountability call. So I've been doing this. I think this is week two. We are like into week two now. And it's been freaking awesome. We do five minutes of journaling and intentional set intention setting for our food for the day. We do five minutes of like you know, getting our body and our blood flowing and just getting into this body and then five minutes of meditation. And in that order, it's really beautiful. It's 15 minutes right in the morning. Everyone has that 15 minutes, especially because it's for ourselves. you know, and it sets the day up with so much more clarity, so much more energy, so much more like good vibes in the good direction. All right. So you are welcome to join that. There's links all over the place, wherever you're at, you can go to my website, rosestein.com and find it there as well. I love you so much. I hope you're having a beautiful, wonderful, amazing day. Go ahead and give this a like, give me a comment, reach out. I want to hear from you. If there's topics of interest to you that are coming up for you and you want to know more about it, let me know. Love you. Have a great day.